Recording in progress. Here we go. Lesson 30. How might citizens participate in civic affairs? Um, I really like this lesson because I'm not going to read all of the critical thinking activities that are in this lesson, but they are good for you to think about. Um, the lesson question here is how might citizens participate in civic affairs? And there in this lesson is a long list of ways that you as a citizen uh, can participate. And it's not just voting. You have to expand your brain when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, like I said, you will learn one of the most important rights of, of citizenship, that's participation. Um, uh, then you have an active role to play in that. And there are other ways that you can participate. Um, the terms to understand, civic life, civic participation, constitutional principle, influence, monitor, political action, and social action. That being said, here we go, lesson 30. What role should citizens have in government? As you learned in the last lesson, in the United States, each citizen is a full and equal member of the political community. Each citizen has certain basic rights and responsibilities. You also learn that government and citizens are both responsible for protecting the rights of individuals. Both are also responsible for promoting the common good. Citizens have other vital roles in our government. One important role that citizens can fulfill is to monitor the decisions and actions of government. To monitor means to keep watch over something. Citizens monitor government to be informed about what the government is doing in their name. They also monitor government to ensure that it serves the purposes for which it was created. Another important role of citizens is to attempt to influence the decisions and actions of government. To influence means to have an effect on or to cause changes in something. It is the right of citizens to try to influence the decisions and actions of government that affect our lives. In a sense, citizenship is an office of government. Some people might say that it is the highest office of government because citizens are the source of government's authority. Like any other office, citizenship carries important responsibilities. Civic participation means taking part in formal political processes and taking part in community activities outside of government. Millions of Americans participate in thousands of voluntary organizations and associations. These organizations seek to improve the life of the community in many different ways. Some benefit the poor, sick, or elderly people. Other organizations are concerned with the environment, healthcare, or the needs of children. They deal with many other community problems and issues. Participating in these organizations gives community members the means to deal with community issues. It also allows them to participate in the way the organizations are run. Government must deal with some matters, such as arresting lawbreakers or establishing rules for building safety. There are other issues where government works with voluntary organizations to solve community problems. In other cases, voluntary organizations act by themselves to address community issues. So big question here, how much participation in government should citizens be willing to contribute? Some citizens do not participate in government. They do not, take, they do not vote or take part in any other ways. Some people, however, believe that citizens have a responsibility to participate. Deciding whether to participate in government and how much time to spend is important. To make good decisions, you must think about such things as, one, what's the purpose of government? Number two, how important your rights are to you? And three, how satisfied you are with the way government is working? All three important questions, if I'm honest. An example might help. If you took your bike in for repairs, you would make sure that the shop repaired bicycles, not cars or toasters. Then when you claimed your bike, you would check to make sure that they did what you hired them to do. If you thought they did a good job, but your bike broke the next week, you might bring it back 
but you would check or monitor their work more closely. Suppose the shop wanted to do more repairs than those you requested. You would want to participate in making that decision. If you were denied the right to participate in, in the decision, you might be very upset, especially when you got the bill. If the shop did a poor job on the repairs again, you would not go back or you would recommend them not or you would not recommend them to your friends. You might call various agencies to complain or you might even try to force them out of the bike repair business. The same is true of government. We should make sure that the people we elect are capable of doing the job we are choosing them for. Once they get the job, we should monitor them to make sure they are doing their job of representing us correctly. If they do a good job, we might not watch them as closely. If they do a bad job, we might check them more closely and might even decide to replace them. Because our officials make decisions that affect us, we are entitled to participate in those decisions. Of course, not all jobs have to be accomplished by government. Americans are famous for doing many things themselves. We organize groups to accomplish any number of things. These include building neighborhood swimming pools, discussing foreign policy issues, or improving our communities in hundreds of ways. Participating in these activities is also civic participation. Some citizens mostly participate in formal governmental processes. Others participate mostly in volunteer groups. Many citizens take part in both forms of civic activity. Americans realize how important civic participation is. When civic participation declines, our democracy declines. It is not just others who are responsible for the civic health of our democracy. We are all responsible. So this is a good little activity here. What are the reasons for participation in government? Um, probably gonna do something like this in class at some point. How might citizens participate in their government? Civic life is the public life of citizens. Civic life is different, but not necessarily separate from private or personal life. In our personal life, we concern ourselves with our particular interests, such as getting an education or having a good job. Our civic life, on the other hand, is concerned with our own interests, as well as the common affairs and interests of our community and nation. Civic life includes the things that we do to carry out our responsibilities and roles as citizens. One example of this is monitoring and influencing the decisions of government. Sometimes our actions can be both personal and civic. These include being a decision maker or being a participant in non-governmental organizations. For example, we might do any of the following, direct the activities of policies of organizations and associations. These can include voting for leaders or holding a leadership position yourself. Take part in an organization's meetings and community activities such as rallies, fundraising, or writing or handing out pamphlets and articles. And this is another fun uh, critical thinking exercise. Uh, it's there to make you think. I'm just going to go through and read the definition of a constitutional principle because it's a it's one of the terms that you want to understand, but it's also one of the things that our government wants to promote. And there's a variety of them. Some of the constitutional principles include the common good, consent of the governed, constitutional government, individual rights, popular sovereignty, representative government. And just in general, a constitutional principle is an essential idea that we as a nation believe about good government. And again, um, another good critical thinking exercise. This lesson is full of them, uh, simply because, again, the, the goal of this course is to make you reflect on your own um, idea of, of, of participation. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of participation in civic life? And again, um, if you think about this whole list of activities here, um, you know, some of these things you might enjoy, some of these things might be too much for you. I don't, I don't expect everybody to run for public office, but you're a student of mine 
and you need to know that you have that right to do that sort of thing. If you want to see change in the world, you can go make it. Um, and learning how to do that sort of thing is super important. Um, what are the effectiveness of different forms of participation? Um, again, it kind of parlays back up here to this big list of ways that you can participate. Um, you know, some you might think is more effective than others. Others are, you know, you might see as, as a waste of your time. That is a judgment that you have to, call, you have to make. So uh, political action and social action. There are two general ways that citizens can address problems in the community through participation in civic life. They are social action and political action. Political action comes in two forms, formal and informal. Formal political action means voting in elections, petitioning government officials, seeking and holding public office and similar activities. Informal political action means face-to-face -face meetings with public officials, writing to newspapers, stating your opinion on issues, um, or honestly, probably just posting about it online, conducting email or television campaigns, attending marches, demonstrations, and other uh, similar activities. There is a wide range of political actions that citizens can engage in when attempting to influence the actions of government. These actions are relevant at local, state, and national levels. To help solve a crime problem, you might meet with government officials requesting that they provide more police services to protect your neighborhood. In dealing with poverty, you might create a program such as a food bank to feed the hungry then you might work to get government to adopt and pay for the program. Social action, smokely. Social action means that individuals and groups solve community problems without relying on government to do it for them. If you're dealing with crime in your neighborhood, you might form a neighborhood watch group. If you are dealing with poverty, you might work in a food bank organized by a charitable organization. So, why should I or you participate in the affairs of my community? Participation in government is, our self, is in our self-interest. The amount of time spent participating will probably depend on how well we think our elected officials are doing. When everything is going well, we might spend less time. If we are pleased with government, we might vote and do little else. When we are concerned that government is not meeting our needs or is violating our rights, we might spend more time. If we are dissatisfied, we might engage in a variety of types of actions. Citizens must actively participate in the civic life of their community and nation if they want their voices heard. Citizenship in a democracy is more than a legal status. Democratic citizenship is a way of life that guides our relationships with other people and with government. Democracy can exist only if it lives in the minds and hearts of its citizens. Citizens should do more than say they are committed to democracy. They should demonstrate their commitment by their, by their participation. It is up to each citizen to determine the level and nature of her or his participation in the civic life of the community and, and nation. And that's it, it's lesson 30. So ultimately, lesson 30 is about how you might participate, right? And if you are looking to answer that question, yeah, you've got that big long list there. But ultimately, this is about you. And I want you to think about uh, exactly what you would do to, um, you know, participate. Have a good one.